Thank you for tuning in with us today. We want you to have the best information so you can make an informed choice on voting day. And today I'm pleased to welcome Benjamin Fox from the Informed Medical Options Party. Thanks for coming along, Ben. It's my pleasure and thank you for the opportunity. My pleasure. And firstly, can you please describe your vision for the future of our electorate? Okay. Well, Informed Medical Options Party has policies um, on our website that anyone can go and have a look at imoparty.com. Um, and basically they portray common sense and, and freedom. That's what, and, and health freedom. You know, we are all for health choice. Um, so we will... Well, I will want to see um, the electorate be less governed by government, so less red tape, less bureaucracy, um, and less less of getting in the way of our lives. We want to have a freedom to to live our life the way we see fit, as long as that does not impede on any other body anybody else's freedom um, per se. We want to see farmers in our community uh, be encouraged to and supported and not bound by red and green tape. Uh, and also because of my Christian faith, I would like to see laws that are based on the Bible, not contrary to it. Okay, great. And what key housing issues does your policy specifically address? Okay, so although um, For Medical Options Party doesn't yet have a housing policy, um, I am willing and will be working with the party to bring about policies that will be um, helpful for families and family stability. Uh, in saying that, housing is uh, governed by supply and demand. And I think we should be, you know, taking some advice or at least some looking back at other places in the country have done this before, like South Australia many years ago released a lot more land and that would help to reduce prices. Um, obviously, the high rental market high is, is a result of high housing prices and you being a real estate agent can be very much aware that Dubbo prices have in, increased, I reckon, I don't know, is it a hundred or two hundred thousand dollars recently in houses? I can't imagine how much they've gone up. Yeah. Um, and that About is a thirty percent, yeah. Yeah, a lot, a lot. Um, and that is a direct relate uh, on rental. I know a lot of people who just struggle to find places and then also can't afford them. Um, so, again, reduction of red tape, reduction of um, uh, hostile environment for owners and investors that will help increase the, mark, the, the supply of houses could go a long way. Awesome. And thank you. And what professional experience do you have that qualifies you to hold a paid position of national influence? Okay. I have a Bachelor of Education and I've been uh, a teacher in a school for 11 years. Um, but not only that, I can read, I can think, uh, and most importantly, and this is not uh, across the board of all politicians, I can listen. And I think that's the most important thing. We need to be able to listen to our constituents, listen to the, the people and bring their representation to Parliament. And um, I can safely say that I have not been represented in Parliament and there are many thousands of teachers and other industries who also have not been listened to. So Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. And what specific benchmarks will you use to determine that your time in office was successful? Okay, so you know, key key performance indicators uh, is is a good thing to think about. And um, well, gross domestic product or GDP uh, has it grown? Has um, hospital waiting lists and and those things, have they been reduced? Have doctors come out to regional areas and stay, make a live, living and of their livelihood in the country? Um, would all be things that would, would help me to understand. I'd also like to keep records of phone calls, um, how well we've followed up on those phone calls and emails and other contacts to the office. I think because right. the main thing would be relaying uh, the interest of the people in Parliament. If I'm not listening to the to the constituents, then I'm clearly not doing a good job. Great, thank you. And our electorate deserves to know how you will show moral leadership. Describe how you will approach a conscience vote, balancing the electorate's voice, your personal values, and also your party's values. Okay. 
So clearly we need to listen. I've said that a few times. We need to listen to our constituents. We need to listen to what, um, what their voice is and what they're thinking about. And so I would gather all those information and I'll balance them. Uh, it's not all about me. I'm not... I'm not the party, I'm not the per, um, the people, I'm here to represent them. So we want to take clear dis, uh, uh, listening to them. Um, my personal values is that I have a strong Christian faith and I would want to endeavour to lay my values um, according to, to that. In that in that what I'm saying is that I value family, I value freedom of choice and freedom of speech, I value life. Um, I revalue the respect of our neighbour, of your neighbours, our elders, our parents, obviously our children, we need to look after them, um, and also value and respect our environment. I believe that we need to be good stewards of our environment. So uh, that's I would take all those values in consideration. As far as our party is concerned, the Informed Medical Options Party is committed to free speech. We're committed to to freedom of choice, freedom of religion, freedom of bodily autonomy. Um, and we'll always vote in line of those principles. Um, governments have not always been uh, transparent and, and, and accountable. We will be different. We will, at the Informed Medical Options Party, will demand truth, transparency and accountability. Great. Well, thank you so much, Benjamin. Uh, I appreciate your time today and thank you, viewers, for tuning in. Thank you very much, Laura. 